Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here and welcome back to the railway. Studio Canal, the good people behind the new The Railway Children Return film, have sent me this bag of goodies and today we're going to take a look at it. This is the least pressured into making a video I have ever felt. Studio Canal did not ask me to make a video about this, they didn't tell me what I should or shouldn't do, they literally just got in touch and said, we want to send you a gift to celebrate our new film, is that okay with you? And I said yes. So they sent me this bag of stuff and I've decided I think I'm going to make a video out of it. That was my choice, they didn't ask me to. However, obviously because they sent this to me for free, I haven't paid for the stuff in this bag and so I have checked the this video includes paid promotion button which is just the best way to make it clear to you that I have not purchased this stuff and also it's just good practice, it's what YouTubers should do when they are sent something for free. Also, there is a locomotive in this bag and I have a, a rule on this channel that says I don't review any model that I haven't purchased myself and as such the locomotive that I'm going to show you here is not going to be reviewed today. I'm certainly going to show it to you and I'll talk about my opinions on it for sure but it's not going to be a review so I'm not going to be rating it, I'm not going to be going into masses of detail about the mechanism because that's not what this video is about. Today we're going to take a look and see what's inside this bag because clearly there's much more than just a locomotive so I'm pretty interested to see what that involves and as for the film itself the railway children return apparently it's out now so that's pretty cool I haven't seen it myself but I might do at some point okay let's see what they sent all right let's delve in then lucky dip let's just go at random so we've got a coloring sheet <laughs> okay so I'm not entirely sure what they thought I was going to do with this, but these will not go to waste. I can definitely find someone who's going to be interested in those. I've got, oh, this is a book. So this is obviously the book, I guess this is the new story that the film is based on. The Story of the Movie by Linda Chapman. All right, yeah, according to the front cover, this is the sequel to the railway children so that'd also be pretty interesting didn't it yeah, I'll have to see if that's any good I'll let you know in the future when I've gotten through it um, we've also got this I was very excited to start with I thought what they've given me a DVD of the new movie uh, no this is the original railway children film which obviously as a railway enthusiast I already own but uh, this seems to be like a, I guess a new edition of it or something it looks different to the one I've got so that's awesome what a cool inclusion and what else we've got uh, looks like a load of cigarettes but no these are I assume crayons to color in the coloring sheet cool that's very nice someone's going to be pleased that's for sure this one uh, this is quite amusing look at this <laughs> what do you reckon that is then well obviously it's a whistle let's give it a go okay enough of that apologies <laughs> and what is this oh we've got a bookmark ah yes to assist in the reading of the book very thoughtful okay nice leather bookmark there and i believe the last thing before we get to the locomotive is this a gigantic chocolate guinea and this will be the first time i've ever looked at any food stuff on this channel i think and just my luck it happens to be on the week when it's been an all-time high of 40 degrees celsius in the loft so i've come prepared but yeah giant chocolate guinea uh, i think it would be rude not to at least give this a little taste so <laughs> let's have a go and yes this penny has been up here in the loft in 40 degree heat so probably a little bit melted or a little bit more melted than it would have been there we go that looks pretty good go on then mm. Mm. better quality chocolate than you would usually find on a chocolate penny i'm gonna have a little bit more mm. Right, video over. I'm satisfied now. Thank you for watching. Bye. Okay, let's stop messing about. Let's take a look at the one item then that we're all interested slash horrified to see. So, it is the Hornby locomotive. 
in a very special box, as you can see. It's got artwork from the film, The Railway Children Return, celebrating the new film. And it says at the bottom there, this is an LMS Class 4F, basically. And if I show you the end of the box, you can see more specifically what this is. So this is R30221. It's an LMS Class 4F, number 3924, The Railway Children Return. And if I show you the back of the box, there's a little bit more here, so yeah, celebrating the new film, a little bit of a written description there. A few photos, we've got Jenny Agata there. I think she's one of the most interesting points about the new film because, of course, she gave that wonderful performance in the original film. So very awesome that they brought her back for the new sequel. But let's take a look at this locomotive there. Not one that I was going to be covering on this channel, but since I've been sent one, let's take a look at it. Here we go. <clears throat> oh my goodness me. Okay, so there it is, the Hornby 4F. Let's pull this out and let's see what this thing is like. Now I have reviewed a Hornby 4F before, so I do know what this is like, but it should be interesting to see a new version of it. So we've got operating and maintenance instructions. Very confusingly, these cover the 4F and the 2P, which are of course completely different locomotives but they do have very similar chassis. So inside it's very basic, lubrication points, loco driving axles basically and crank pins, separating loco and tender, removing tender body to fit DCC, so it's very standard stuff, nothing much to see on the back. Go on then, let's get this loco out. <laughs> Just my luck to end up with another one of these. Okay, no, I'm very, very grateful, I'm very grateful, okay. That sounded more sarcastic than I intended. I'm going to shut up. Okay. So to be fair, the finish on this is quite good. Yeah, you can get that. It's a bit of a satin sheen to it. So, yeah, that's, that certainly could be worse. Right. Let's pull this thing out then. Ah, uh, yes. So to be clear, the horrible LMS thing going on with the side of the tender, that is not on Hornby. The film production company are responsible for the, frankly, very bizarre livery which is a weird creative choice really, because obviously if you're making a film about trains, you should probably assume that people who like trains are going to be watching the film, and therefore to present the starring locomotive in such a fashion is um, a very interesting idea, shall we say. But uh, as far as I can tell, this is how the engine looks in the film, so it's not Hornby's fault that this looks the way it does. However, what is Hornby's fault is the fact that yes, this is the original Airfix 4F from the 1970s. The model is now 44 years old, and if you want to buy this thing from Hornby, at least at the RRP, it's going to set you back £139.99. Not entirely sure quite how they can do that with a clear conscience. So yeah, it's fairly lightweight, obviously the loco body itself is all plastic and such, and to overcome that, I can see that this still has rubber traction tyres on the uh, centre driving wheels there. Amazing. But sure, they have replicated the, uh, the strange livery that is seen in the film, so I guess props for that. Okay, so not a review, we're not going to go into too much detail, but I will show you some of the details, or I guess lack thereof, with this loco, then we'll give it a run of course and see how it goes. Right, so I'm trying to choose my words very carefully here, so I think I'm going to start by saying obviously I'm very grateful to Studio Canal and the people they're working with to promote the film for sending me this model, it's very very kind of them. And I'm sure this model is in no way a reflection of the new film that they've presumably put a lot of effort into. And Studio Canal, they are not a manufacturer of model railways, so in many ways, how are they expected to know what is a good or a bad model? However, I am always going to be honest with you with regards to whether or not a model is any good. And the simple fact is that this model is not any good, in my opinion. I'm sure it was great almost 50 years ago when it was first released by Airfix, but now it is just an old and outdated model, which here, in my opinion at least, is being sold far too expensively. So yeah, it's an all plastic locomotive body, the running plate is plastic as well, and it's fairly light at 224 grams. It's not put together particularly well, I mean look, look at the gap there between the cab and the running plate, and the cab's all sort of loose. You can see the axles are poking through the wheel, so not very realistic. We've got chunky, thick moulded details, big chunky safety valves and such, made of metal though, which is pretty good. 
no sprung buffers, no painted cabs, and shockingly, the front-facing windows don't even have glazing. And you can clearly see the chassis block and the gear shafts poking through the side of the bodywork there. And I guess the ultimate nail in the coffin for this model is that quite clearly the locomotive used in the new Railway Children Return film is a right-hand drive locomotive, and yet this model is showing a left-hand drive 4F locomotive, where the reverser rod here is on the left. None of this pipe work should be here, which means that to anybody who knows a thing or two about these locomotives, this does a pretty poor job of resembling the locomotive in the film. And yeah, the less said about the decoration, I guess the better. But again, that's not really Hornby's fault. Again though, I think there's a fair chance that Studio Canal were not aware of any of these things. And I say that because they sent this to me. Hornby, on the other hand, obviously do know better than that because they are a manufacturer of model railways. And so this is on them, really. And what with everything else that's gone on this year with the Titfield Thunderbolt stuff, I will be very surprised if Studio Canal want to use Hornby again in the future. Especially when there are companies out there like Backman who do an actually decent version of the LMS 4F. They do a right-hand drive version of it, which would have been more accurate. And of course, their model is so much better quality and so much more detailed. It's a pity that Hornby were chosen for this job, when there are clearly others who could have done a much better job. But let's be honest here, if you're a casual enthusiast and you're a big fan of the new movie, and you don't mind the ridiculously high price, yes, I realise that is a lot of caveats, then I suppose this is absolutely fine. It does look approximately like the locomotive in the film, and it could be quite a cool thing to own. So, yeah, it depends really what sort of enthusiast you are and how much money you've got to throw away, I suppose. But that's it. We won't go into any more detail than that, I don't think. We will get it down onto the track, though, of course, and see how this performs. Okay, there she is down onto the track, the Railway Children Return locomotive. And I'm not going to go too much into the mechanism and such, but I will say the loco drivers sit into proper turned metal bearings. There is a five-pole motor, it's got tender pickups and such. This is not the original 1970s chassis, far from it. Hornby did upgrade that several years ago. So yeah, the mechanism's not too bad, except of course for the light loco weight, which justifies the need for rubber traction tyres. Generally, that's a very poor quality feature. But how is the performance straight out of the box? Let's have a look. Turning up. Uh, oh, there we go. That was at 50%. I thought we had a dead loco as well as everything else. But uh, no, it just, just needs a bit of a warm up, I reckon. And as you can see, yeah, the performance there is absolutely fine. Seems to be good. Nice and smooth, not much of a wobble to it or anything. Seems to be fairly quiet. Yeah, this is this is definitely a much better chassis than the ones, uh, you know, that Airfix produced back in the day or whatever. So at least it's got that going for it. What's it like at the slow speed? Let's have a little look, see if it can crawl. Turning up, turning up a bit more. Okay, so no, not really. <laughs> I mean... Don't let me give the impression that this is a quality loco, because um, it is cogging quite a bit. Not sure whether there's a flywheel inside. I haven't opened this one up today, and yeah, it does keep stalling. But, you know, for a novelty, for a bit of film merchandise, I guess, it's fine. It does the job. So, um, yeah, I guess I could run this in. I'll run it in off camera, and then I'll hook it up to some rolling stock. And I think that'll do us. Okay, well, let's see how it gets on around the track then. So there is definitely nothing wrong with the way this performs. It's quiet, it's smooth, it's constant in its speed, seems to be reliable thanks to all of its pickups, so the performance is fine. Not keen on the traction tyres, obviously, but you know, it's not a massive deal on the grand scheme of things. So performance seems to be fine. I'll see you in just a second then once this has had a chance to run in, and then I'll hook it up to some coaches and uh, just show you what this is capable of. So there we go, some maroon coaches there to look a little bit like the ones the Loco is hauling in the film. And as you can see, it's hauling those without any problems. Overall, yeah, it looks fine. From any sort of distance, this Loco is okay. So I think that's it. That will just about do it for this video. Thank you very much to Studio Canal for sending me the very generous gift bag. It's been a lot of fun to look at what I got inside there. I apologise also to Studio Canal for being mean about their Loco. 
I wouldn't blame them at all if they expected better than this from Hornby, because frankly, we all do. <laughs> this is just the way Hornby is these days. It's the company they are. They do this sort of thing all the time. <laughs> and yeah, we all, we all expect better, so it's understandable. Pretty cool to have been able to cover this loco. I wasn't expecting to, so that was a nice surprise. That'll just about do it. I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers, everybody.